Hello, hello, this is Lolly. I'm so excited that you're joining me today. I have a box that we are going to open today together. And this is the We Are Memory Keeper Press It. Now I saw this at Creativation and I will give you a link down below to the two videos where I saw it demoed. And I've been so anticipating playing with this. Um, I got it and I, I think it's been a week now because I just knew that I wouldn't have time to really do it justice. So I got this from HSN. They had a special that, and I think these are probably the sheets, 40 pack of the sheets I ordered. Okay, so here we go. Sight unseen. There it is, the mold press. So here it is right there, Mold Press. I keep calling it the Press It, but it is the Mold Press. Shellebrate, how adorable. So you can see some ideas here, and they did demo this at Creativation, and they did it with the shell. So there is the piece they gave me from the demonstration. And so you, they made shakers, they made a, oh, that's really cute, little decoration for cupcake cupcake topper. They've got soap that they've made out of it, just so pretty. There's the side. The back, which has some more ideas here, things that they've made. So once you have something, you can continue making molds out of it. And what are they doing here? UV resin. They're making resin pieces out of it. And there's the other side. Woohoo! Okay, let's see what comes in here. Now, they also sell a vacuum that you can use for this, or you can use your own vacuum. We just recently got a new vacuum and the hose attachments are weird. So I really suspect that my new vacuum will not hook up to this. So I still have my old one and I'll keep that in the basement. Okay. Flip the sides of it. Okay. And there are in the box a few sheets here. I'm not sure how many that is. And looks like an adapter for the hose, probably. Okay, we're going to have to read all of this. Now, with something like this, I do like to pre-read everything to make sure I'm doing it right instead of just putting it all together and guessing and seeing how hard it is. <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, so these are not attached. So, here's the cardboard. There we go. So it does look like these sides are going to have to screw in here somehow. So I need to figure that out first. That Yeah, the sides is exactly what I thought. So here we have the base. And this is the hose attachment off the back. Or off the side, actually, if I recall. So there's not a left or a right. These are identical, but there is an up and down. You can see there's measurements right here on it. So it looks like... Those go in there, and I'm looking at the instructions as I go. So yeah, those are called the columns, and it said to insert them. And then, this is magnetized. And then, with power button facing you. Oh, this is the power button is on this top part here. Looks like this is the next piece here. It says top so that you know you're, which way you're putting that on there. This is going to be going here. How does that connect to this? Oh, okay. The magnets hold it up. Got it. The photo shows the vacuum thing on the left. The power button to my right and then this goes on like that right on there's holes for these right in here just like in the base and I'm just going to put those on there okay it snaps in place and this is magnetized okay I'm going to tilt this out so you can see it this part here is magnetized the sheet is actually going to go on here in there in the tray 
and then it's going to get pushed down onto the item. That's all the assembly required, so that was actually pretty easy. Okay, so, <laughs> and this piece here does say it's a hose adapter, so if you look here, you've got that, but if your hose, see it's kind of a, it's not an oval, it's just a rubbery thing, so it will adapt to whatever size of a hose you have, which is a really good idea. Okay. So now I am going to read all the instructions and we are going to play and do a demo. Okay, so I have my vacuum hooked up through this and this really does help because it's it just makes the grip in here more tight and it's kind of it's rubbery. So what you want to do is turn it on right here. Oh, I have to plug this in. Duh. <laughs> Like the light's not turning on, Lolly. There we go. Okay, so it is on. You can see the light there. Off, on. Has to be on for 10 minutes. I'm going to hook the vacuum back up because it came undone while I was moving that around. Now, I'm gonna look at the clock here and make sure I don't lose track of time. While that's doing its thing, I'm going to separate these two layers, they're just magnetized, and lay one of the sheets of acetate in there, but you have to remove the film on both sides of it first. It's kind of like when you get a, like a cell phone or something, it's got that protective sheet on it. Okay. Then you just lay that in there, and you can see it's got little uh, raised arms right here, these little tabs that kind of hold it, slide it from sliding around. And then put it back on. And then when we put this in, you have to be careful of the heating element. Put it in and then lift it up. The magnets will do the rest. Okay, I'm going to turn this a little bit. Now it's at 10 minutes, so like I said, I'm going to keep track of time. I have a couple items I want to put on there. I'm going to put this wooden spool and this, which is my bobbin, metal bobbin holder. I'm gonna put those in there, kind of spread out a little bit. And then I'm not sure at this point how thick of a material I can put down on that, on that element down here. Because um, if it's really thick, then what happens when I bring that sheet down in? The sheet's this big, but then it's gonna to have to pull in on itself in order to get over that big thing. I'm not sure how well this will hold around an item like that. So we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, what you cannot see, remember these side columns here, they have measurements on them. These right here, they have measurements on the inside. That acetate is going to start drooping. And when it droops, it's going to sag. And when it sags down to one inch, you lay your items on the thing here, on the, uh, element. it's not a heating element, I keep calling it a heat heating element. You lay them onto the platform, turn the vacuum on, and lower this using the handles only, and kind of pushing it against the the uh, columns here because you don't want it to come off center. So keeping an eye on it, it's not sagging yet. It takes a while. I don't. This part down here doesn't get hot, so I don't really know what the difference is. Why I couldn't just put these on there now, although it says to wait until it's heated. Okay, I'm going to pause the video until it is ready and I've gone ahead and lowered this down a little bit so you can see better I know I can't really get a good camera angle on this but doing the best we can here now it's been about three minutes I don't know if you could see it probably not uh, it's actually smoking a little bit you could see some of the wisps of it coming here and it could just be because it's the very first time this of being used I don't know I don't know if it's always going to smoke, so, and I don't think it's enough to set off your smoke detectors. Okay, I'm going to pause the video again. Okay, that is about an inch hanging down. I am going to lay these on there. Then I will turn the vacuum on. It's going to be loud. I'm going to turn the vacuum on and lower this. Now it 
excess to turn the vacuum off when it has molded and it's cooled. Now I dropped that so rapidly because I was not used to this. The vacuum does help pull it down. So I think I would try a more controlled lowering next time. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. Pull it out. Be careful not to burn yourself. And I think because this, um, that's what I thought, it may have sealed under these items because they are, uh, because of their shape, it curled around. I have to pop them out of here carefully. It went all the way around and then curved underneath the inside there. So that might be an issue. See what I'm saying? It went on the inside here. <laughs> is strong so lesson number one use something that does not uh, it can't get under like that I may have to cut these out we're going to have to try again experiment number one failed we're going to use a different object I have these but I think that and I would love to do a silhouette of the llama but I think it might be too thick in order to get a really good impression so let me go ahead and set this up I have it still on And I peeled the thing off. I'm going to peel the other one off. The nice thing is it's preheated. This is why we do experiments. Okay. All right, so I'm going to find something first, and then I'll put it in there to heat up. Okay, I have some smaller shells, and I think these are real shells. We're going to try those. We know that that would work with the system. I'm going to put this in here, and then up, remembering that it's hot. They do sell um, heat gloves and I'm not sure if it's going to take 10 minutes again because it's already preheated. So I'm just going to watch and see how long it takes it to droop the plastic or the, to droop for the uh, one inch lower. Okay, it's ready again. Let's get these shells on here. I decided to use these two. They have, um, they're, they're the better shape. Okay, now I'm going to turn the vacuum on. It's going to get loud. <laughs> Okay. Now, something I've noticed on both of my chimes is these spider web uh, lines here. I'm not sure what's causing those, and it could be that this is not getting warm enough, that I'm not letting it do its thing where it droops for you know, an inch down. I'm not sure. So I was very careful before when I touched that to make sure that it wasn't too hot. Now see these, it came right up off the shells because of the shape of the shells. Uh, the plastic couldn't get down underneath it. But these little lines I don't think should be there, especially considering when uh, the demo that they did here, you see that? There are none of those lines around it. You just perfectly see the little uh, the little score line, the little lines on the base here. Boy, I could feel that steam. It didn't take as long for the acrylic or the uh, to get into shape or start drooping this time. So, what is causing these little lines? I don't know, and we'll have to keep playing around and test it out. So, I'm going to try the next time to make sure that I heat it up even more. Let's do one more with the shells. Turn that back on one more with the shells or maybe even one shell let's do one shell to do a, a comparison let's pull the plastic off of here and i'm really going to let this one heat up and see what happens okay now that is really drip duping dripping down an inch i'm putting one shell right in the middle Let's try this again. And it has it has the same issue with the spider veins coming off of that. I I don't know. I'm going to have to probably reach out to the company, read the instructions even more. You see, anything that I would want to use this for, these little veins coming off of there are going to really prohibit that. It's going to not be an attractive thing. I can't use it as a mold, for instance, for candy or 
a candle or soap or anything. I can't use it as a shaker card, so what would I use it for? So this is, it looks like a big beetle, doesn't it? How funny is that? So right now, I would say setup was a breeze. The instructions seems pretty clear cut, but so far it's just not working for me. I am recognizing that it's most likely user error, so I will keep plugging away at this and do a part two video when I get it figured out. Okay, so I need your input. Um, this is the one that they made. There are none of those little spider webby things here, so I know this is supposed to be able to do it like this. If you're making this for a candy mold or a soap mold, you don't want these lines here because then you can't fill this or it's your chocolate or your wax or whatever starts spreading out this way. Also for a shaker, if I cut out paper to go around here, it's not going to be exactly perfect, but you would still, this is going to prohibit the paper from adhering on the sides because it is sticking up. So um, the, that's the main reason I got it, was for making shaker cards and shaker crafts. And so those of you who've worked in dental labs, you know that basically this machine is a remake of uh, what they use in dental labs and dental offices. So one of my friends who spent her career in a dental office, this was her job, was to make the molds. And she said, yeah, it shouldn't be doing this. I posted about this on Instagram and asked my followers, do you have any ideas? And someone suggested that you should not put the vacuum on first, that you should uh, lower the plastic and then turn the vacuum on. So I reached out to my friend who worked in the dental lab and she said, yeah, the, the plastic needs to hit the item that you're molding this before you turn the vacuum on. So that's one thing. The other thing that she suggested was that I might be overheating my plastic, and that is this part I didn't realize, so two things were wrong. One is the instructions may be wrong here, and that is about turning the vacuum on first instead of last, and the other thing was my operator error was that you, re you preheat this for 10 minutes and then put the plastic in there, this, the frame. So I was putting the frame in and heating it up like that. So this time I'm doing it differently. We will see how it goes. I have, this has been preheating for 10 minutes. So now we put this in here, careful not to uh, touch the heating element like that. And now it won't take as long for that to heat up. It'll heat up quickly and melt down, but it's not there during the entire 10 minutes of the heating process. So we're going to, um, that part I am doing correctly now, and then I will lower this when it's ready. I will lower it, then turn the vacuum on after it has made good contact. I will still do one simple shell just to make sure that I am uh, not adding anything into the mix that may complicate what I want to do. It's drooping a good inch. Um, I don't want to do it any more or less than that right now. So what I'm going to do is lower this and then turn the vacuum on. And I have this, and I have the same problem. I still have veins on it. These veins are going clear up into the mold so that I'm not even getting a, I'm not even getting a good shell now. I mean, they're, they're down right on top there. So I really don't know at this point. Okay, I just want to say that I have given this the old college try. I got my husband, the engineer, involved. And we tried everything we could think of. We tried to heat it up less. We tried to heat it up more. We tried, in other words, letting the plastic sink not more, let it sink not as less, to do the vacuum before, turn the vacuum on before we run the mold, run the platform down, to do the vacuum afterwards. Nothing, nothing is helping. Look at these spider veins. So, not excited about this at all. Um, this was the worst. Oh, the other thing that we even tried was when we lowered this, Instead of lowering it straight down, we lowered it even at an angle, so hopefully thinking it would get better contact, but no. So right now I would say this is not worth it, and I will be sending it back. I will reach out to the company first 
I have tagged them on Instagram without any result yet, but I will also try another method of contact, and I will hopefully let you know what happens. Thank you for watching, everyone.